my name is Victoria Burris, and I worked with Dr. Estefa and Dr. Kohler on methods to study the intestinal microbiome. Um, we also have a lot of data right now that's currently being analyzed on a microbiome project that's a little bit more sensitive, but we're not able to publish those things at this time. So the human microbiome has been characterized as a superorganism. That is that it's a collection of not only human cells, but also you know, more than 39 trillion bacterial cells um, and their corresponding microbial genomes. All told, human microbiota make up more cells in the human body than human cells do. Um, and each genome has between two and 20 million genes compared to the only 23,000 genes that make up the human genome. Um, together with the environment, these help influence the health and disease states of humans. And in the intestinal microbiome, work with bidirectional communication between the CNS and the immune system also to influence health and disease states. We used fecal pellets and intestinal content to extract genomic DNA using endpoint PCR, quantitative real-time PCR, and also PCR to target 16S rRNA genes. Um, the 16S PCR, we then used a library prep, next-gen sequencing, and sequencing data analysis to give us the composition, abundance, and diversity of the microbiome. Endpoint PCR is really easy for identification of pure cultures, allows for full length amplicon sequencing. However, you have to clone mixtures and it's low throughput. Compared to quantitative, which is absolute or relative quantification, group specific primers, very, very sensitive, um, and makes analysis of mixtures possible. However, is more cost prohibitive, still relatively low throughput, and has prior sequencing that's required. 16S rRNA genes are the main marker for um, reading these. They sort of act like a barcode. They help us with identification and differentiation of bacteria. Um, endpoint PCR is very, very simple, but it's impossible to reflect or show you the complexity of the microbiome. Um, and only individual groups can be assessed. Quantitative PCR. Um, is actually quantitative, obviously, but doesn't allow you to interrogate different organisms that you find in the microbiome. So this graph that I added shows how um, Clostridia and Lactobacillus species reacted to neomycin over seven days. High throughput technologies have a lot of pros and cons. Whole genome sequencing makes it really easy to study unculturable organisms. 16S sequencing really only gives you bacteria and archaea. Metatranscriptome tells you, you know, genes and gene expression. Proteonome tells you about proteins. And then metabolome tells you about what those proteins are doing. So through this, we can find out who's there. What genes are they using? Are those genes different than what we've seen in the past? What are the proteins? And, and then what are the proteins doing? How does that affect the intestinal microbiome as a whole and possible human and animal disease states? In conclusion, high throughput tech sequencing technologies have really changed microbial research. Traditional methods are increasingly being replaced by 16S or whole genome sequencing. These approaches can answer a lot of different questions about human and intestinal microbiome. With the 16S rRNA gene, we ask who's there. Whole genome sequencing, we see what can they do. And with metatranscriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics, we find out what are they doing. Despite sophisticated technologies, microbiome research is not necessarily restricted to large or expensive research projects. Well-planned small projects can be part of larger studies or standalone studies that allow students to experience scientific research and discovery in a new and exciting field. Using these methods, summer undergraduate, graduate, as well as medical students can really discover some of the zeal of scientific discovery in microbiome research.
These are my references. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at victoria.burris at okstate.edu. Thank you.